Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this video in which I want to kind of try and provide a condensed retrospective for Blink. Now what I mean by that is kind of going over Blink's numbers. How many people have downloaded Blink? How many people are still playing Blink? And of course the most popular question I get on my channel, how much revenue has Blink generated? Now after we go through all that, I kind of want to share whether or not I think Blink as a project is a success or a failure. And I have some thoughts that I really want to share with you guys there, so I hope you'll stick around. Now, before we dive into any dashboard statistics, I want to start out by looking at Blink's App Store listings. Overall, I have to say I'm very pleased with how Blink has been received on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. On the App Store, it's sitting at 4.6 stars out of 5, and on the Play Store, it's at 4.8 stars out of 5. I think those positive scores go a long way to make these store pages more enticing to a potential player. In addition to this, almost all the feedback that I've read from the reviews is either positive or constructive or a mix of the two, which is great. And of course, if you're watching this and you've played Blink and enjoyed it or have constructive feedback for me, definitely consider leaving a rating or review. It helps me out. Now we'll move on to some player statistics. I'll turn to the Unity dashboard to show more info about who's playing Blink across both platforms. First, I'm gonna look at my monthly active users. That's the line on top here. Blink hasn't even been released for a month yet, so what we're seeing here is basically the total number of unique users who have played my game. To me, this metric seems like a pretty good indication of how well I was able to market or just generally spread the word about the game. At the time of me filming this video, you can see that I've had around 850 unique players. To me, this number is pretty awesome. I actually have another app that I developed about a year ago that's on the App Store, and when I released that, I only had like 10 or 20 downloads. I'm pretty sure those were all from my friends and family, so 850 is a huge upgrade for me. As far as my marketing effort goes for Blink, it's pretty much just this YouTube channel. And to be clear, marketing is not the reason I make these videos. That said, as I share my journey building the game, I gathered a great following of people who were both inspired by my work and excited to play Blink. I think right before we released Blink, I hit 2,000 subscribers, which is really awesome. So I know I have you guys to thank for downloading and giving Blink a try. Next up, I want to look at another metric here called daily active users, which is this green line on the graph. As you can see, this number has remained pretty small throughout the life of Blink, and apart from a couple bumps, has been in steady decline. To me, this represents one of the biggest challenges game developers face, which is creating an experience that holds the player's attention and, more importantly, an experience that the player wants to revisit after they've already spent some time with the game. With that said, I can't say I'm really either surprised or disappointed by what I'm seeing here. The core gameplay loop of Blink is very simple, and I think a lot of players either find it too hard to get into or too quick to master. In addition to this, my reward system is pretty shallow. I have some neat unlockable characters, but they're just cosmetic. They don't fundamentally change the gameplay in any way. I released the game knowing about these faults, and I tried to manage my expectations around player retention. So, that's the state of Blink after three weeks. I've had about 850 people play, but only a fraction of those folks still continue to play. I thought a bit about how I can improve this, and one glaring feature comes to mind. And that would be leaderboards. I gave these a shot earlier on in development, and I really didn't like the native Game Center UI for iOS. I was worried that developing my own custom UI would be too much overhead, so I scrapped it. But the more I think about it, I think leaderboards would add great longevity to the game. Even if you don't care about the unlockable characters, or if you've already unlocked them all, leaderboards will still give you another reason to come back and play the game. This is especially true if you're the competitive type of person who likes to see their name above someone else's on a leaderboard. Now, I think I'm going to be adding these to Blink in the next update, so I'll probably make a video about how I try to design that system in a modular way so that I can use it for Blink and other games that I make in the future. Let me know in the comments if you like that idea or if you have any others that could help bring players back to the game. With that said, I think it's finally time to take a peek at Blink's revenue. Looking at my overview in the Unity dashboard, I can see that since the game's launch I have made... That's right, 17 whole dollars. Did you think it was going to be more? I think I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I do think I'll be making a little bit more than that in the first three weeks though, just because of how Unity Ad seems to work. As it stands currently, almost all of that juicy $17 has come from in-app purchases. If I look at my ad revenue here, I can see that since the game's launched, I've earned only $1.21 from ads, which seems kind of low in my mind from having 850 people check the game out. If I delve even further into this data and look at my two ad placements, I can actually see that from my over 700 rewarded ad impressions, I have earned $0. My current understanding of this is that Unity's ad system can't really accurately report revenue earned for basically any game that has less than 5,000 impressions. Now, I get this based off of posts that Unity employees have made in the forums. So I think what's going on here is that I just haven't shown enough ads for Unity to reward me with any revenue yet. 
either that or I've done something terribly wrong while implementing my ads. And please tell me if that's the case. What I still don't really understand is whether or not I'll make any money if I fail to reach 5,000 impressions. I guess we'll find out. Either way, those are the numbers. But the good news is that I think I have an easy tweak in mind that might help bump up my revenue a little bit. Currently, the only way you're shown an interstitial ad in Blink is if you play two or more rounds in a row utilizing the play again button, then try to go back to the main menu using the main menu button. What this means is that you could just play a thousand rounds in a row, never go back to the main menu, and never see an ad. I did this intentionally. I really did not want Blink to be a game with like super annoying ads. That said, I have spent hundreds of hours on this project and getting $17 back from it was a slight bummer. So I think I have a way to tip the scales just ever so slightly in my favor here. I'm considering modifying that logic to play the ad when you tap the play again button rather than the main menu button. This will obviously result in players being shown more ads. Maybe I'll move the number of required plays up to three or something to offset this change. The obvious side effect of this change is that the advertising will become more annoying to players, and it's kind of hard for me to predict what effect this will have. On the glass half full side, maybe because the ads are a little bit more annoying, people will feel more inclined to pay 99 cents for my in-app purchase to remove them. But on the other side, they might become so annoying that uh, users just uninstall the game, which would obviously not be great. I'd love to hear your opinion on this as the player. I'm balancing the delivery of ads is something that I've clearly failed at, but I want to learn how to do it right, both for Blink and for my future projects. So, now you know how Blink's release has gone, and how I plan to make some improvements to the game as a result. The last thing I want to talk about is whether or not I consider Blink to be a success. As I was looking at all these numbers after release, it was really easy for me to get down on myself. Just think, I spent nine months working on this. I devoted hundreds of hours of free time to setting up my business, creating Blink, and pouring effort into these YouTube videos. I spent about $125 setting up my business and another $125 for Apple and Android developer accounts. I also spent $11 to host my website. All in all, with my $17 earned so far, creating Blink has cost me $244. But it's also easy for me to get out of that hole once I take a minute and think about what my goals were with Blink and my YouTube channel and what I've managed to accomplish. I started making video games because I love to play video games and I was inspired to learn to create them. I got that inspiration from Concerned Ape and Thin Matrix and Blackthorn Prod and Danny and I'm super thankful to all those guys. In creating Blink and this YouTube channel, my number one goal has been to enjoy game development and become a part of the game development community and ultimately inspire you, the viewer, to do the same. I wanted to pass along the same excitement I experienced from reading Eric's blog posts about Stardew Valley and seeing Carl release Equilinox. On top of that, I wanted to prove that you can build and release your own games even if you work a full-time job and aren't willing to sacrifice all the other things you enjoy in life. And based on the thousands of views and comments you guys have given me, I really feel like I've accomplished that, at least to a small degree. Now, I'd be lying if I said that money played no part in my motives here. I think we could all agree that turning something we love as much as game development into a secondary or maybe even primary source of income would pretty much be a dream come true. Obviously right out of the gate Blink's not going to do that for me, but I want to reference a GDC talk related to this topic that I find to be very uplifting and encouraging. The talk is one given by Jake Burkett of Grey Alien Games, and the title is How to Survive in Game Dev for 11 Years Without a Hit. Rather than quote him, I want to try and summarize something really interesting he talks about. In this talk, he describes all the games he's made, and obviously how none of them were viral hits. He shows you the numbers for each of these games, and at the beginning, it's pretty bleak. But as the talk goes on, he describes that he never abandoned any of his projects. He would go back and update and promote them, all while he was continuing to make new games. What this resulted in is what he calls a long tail of income. His collection of small projects over time ended up generating enough revenue to support his passion, because he kept them relevant and because he had quite a few of them. Even though Blink's not made any money for me right out of the gate, I see it as the very beginning of that long tail. As I continue to move forward developing and releasing more games, I want to revisit my past projects like Blink and try to keep them relevant and try to keep them up to date. I think that's going to be the key to any monetary success I end up finding with game dev. Also, when you have the time, I recommend going to watch that entire talk by Jake. I think there's just a lot to be learned from it and it's very motivating. So, given everything I've said, it shouldn't be a big surprise to you that I consider Blink to be a huge success. I've just learned so much over the past nine months and I can't wait to apply it all to my next project, which I'll be announcing soon. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know with the thumbs and I'll see you guys soon.